Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Spirit Side Podcast, where we look at your world with a balanced and spiritual perspective. I'm your host, Paul James Caden, and today on the show, we are asking the question Are you a sheep being led to the slaughter? You know, I've said it time and time and time again on this show for probably a year now, on and off, how much I've noticed people are absolute followers. They can be convinced of anything by anyone for any reason. It doesn't matter what the truth is. It doesn't matter how much research you can do or evidence you can show to prove to people that they are on a path that is going to eventually hit the wall in a very big and a very bad way. They just don't want to hear it. It's like the entire world is now divided up into cults. Now that's something else that I've been saying for a while now, and now other people are starting to say it. I'm seeing it on blogs. I'm seeing it on YouTube channels. There's a gentleman who uh, has a, a comedy channel, and sometimes he rants. And he had kind of a serious comedic video the other day where he was talking about it seems like everybody is in a cult. There. They're following these personalities. They're following these politicians. And the funny thing about it all is that all these different people look at everybody else and talk about how blind they are, how stupid they are, how ignorant they are. They call one another sheeple. When every single one of these people would fit every single one of those descriptions. They're all sheeple following the tune of their preferred Pied Piper where if, wherever it may lead them. And believe me, in the end, it's not going to lead anywhere good. We've talked on this show in the past about the globalist agenda about our government, our military spending billions, possibly trillions of dollars over the years learning how to control people, how to manipulate people, how to get people to follow the cues that you want them to follow. And this is why our government and this is why our military and different branches of our government have studied things like waking hypnosis or the power of suggestion. This is why they study cults and they pay very close attention to these leaders and see exactly what it is they do and exactly what it is they say that gets so many people to check their brain at the door and just say, yes, we hear and we obey. They're just not looking at that stuff to have a hobby or to figure out how it's done so they can help people or warn people what to look for so they don't become victim of a mind cult or a religious cult, or any kind of cult. They're doing it. They've studied these things and so much more when it comes to the mind and manipulation and control. They've studied those things for their own purposes. And another very funny thing is, is how every single person following these cults of personality in our society today, all talk about how everybody wants to control everybody else. 
the people that follow politicians, oh, the government, the, the media, the advertising industry, oh, they all want to control us. They all, want, they all want to manipulate how we think. All the conspiracy theorists, oh, look at the, the government and the media and all these people. They're trying to manipulate us and tell us how to think, trying to control us, trying to divide us. The religious people, look at everyone following the government and the the conspiracy theorists. They're being manipulated and controlled, and that's what they want. And you know what? The third funny thing is, maybe the fourth, because I don't know how many times I've used that term right now. But we'll just say this. The strange thing about it is, every single one of them is being manipulated and controlled. And it's like they're under a spell that they don't want to get out of. Just like the gentleman I told you about who makes or has the YouTube channel that is uh, comedic. Uh, Sometimes, you know, he rants or has a little more, a bit of a serious conversation. Uh, His name is Vic. I don't remember his last name. It's something like uh, Debedito or some such thing. Maybe you've heard of him. He swears a lot, but he's a funny guy. But he said in his latest video, well, actually a video he made yesterday that I just happened to catch, it was about people following the conspiracy theorists. And he said the same thing that I said for months now, for years now. And he's just an average guy. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to see this. But he said the thing about these conspiracy theorists is they come up with this stuff. They hear this stuff. And it takes you literally, his words were literally, five seconds of research to find out that it's not true. And he used as an example the people who said, oh, gee, isn't it funny that Russia isn't having any cases of the coronavirus? He said it took him literally five seconds to go online and type in Russia and the coronavirus, and all these stats came up, all these statements from the the Russian government, how many cases there were, how many deaths there were. And he was very surprised at the stupidity of people, and he swore a lot, and it was a little bit funny, but he was right. People hear this nonsense. Oh, it's not happening in Russia. Oh, so-and-so said it. It must be. People say, oh, you can't catch a virus unless it's injected in you or you, you know, mix bodily fluids with somebody. Oh, that must be. You can't catch a virus. And they won't do 10 seconds of research to find out if there's anything factual about this or not. Because, see, that's part of the brainwashing system. Because these cult leader conspiracy theorists tell their followers, you can't trust the media, you can't trust the government, you can't trust science, You can't trust anybody. They're all lying to you. Every single word they speak to you, every single fact they share with you is an absolute and complete lie. I'm the only one who's doing the proper research, digging deep and finding the answers that you need. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Think about cults. You, the world's not going to save you. Religion's not going to save you. Jesus, God, no, nothing or nobody's going to be able to help you. Because they've all lied to you. They've all misled you. They've all given you the wrong information. But I 
have been enlightened. I have found the truth. And I'm the only one you can trust to give you the spiritual information and enlightenment that you need to make it to paradise or heaven or nirvana or whatever that cult leader calls it. Isn't it interesting that these cult conspiracy theorists have the same exact mode of operation? We can't, we can't trust anyone or anything except this guy or this little group of people that are telling us we can't catch a virus. There's demon DNA in the coronavirus vaccine. There's nanobots in the coronavirus vaccine. All this stuff. And people cannot do one ounce of credible research to find out if it is correct or not. Because they've been absolutely brainwashed into thinking anything else they hear anywhere else in the world, no matter who says it, is it a, is a complete and total lie. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty damn alarming. Is this how far we have fallen? That somebody with a laptop on YouTube, somebody with a blog that writes an article, can manipulate the minds of so many people and make them absolutely paranoid and delusional and distrusting of everybody else in the world, including their own families. We got people out there mixed up in these groups, the conspiracy theorists, the pseudo-religious groups, who won't even go around their family anymore because they celebrate the holidays, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, because these people have convinced them that their poor, deluded family are just all sheeple, caught up in the system. They get their flu shot. Oh, well, you know, that's one strike against them. They celebrate the holidays. The holidays are satanic. Oh, that's another strike against them. They believe in science or something that they saw on the news well, that's a third and a fourth strike against them. These people are no good. These people, and, and this is what, understand this. These people, the pseudo-religious communities and the conspiracy theorists, all tell their people this. Same thing that cults. And I've studied cults. And when I've studied cults, especially through the 90s, I went and sat in some of their meetings just to observe what they did, how they spoke, the literature they printed. It was a study in real time for me. And you know what? One of the things, one of the things, besides I'm the only one you can trust, one of the things they always tell the people to rook them in, your family doesn't really understand you. They don't understand this path you're on. They don't understand this information that you've obtained in your life. Oh, but I do. We do. And don't let your family talk you out of going back to the way you were, to that world of illusion, that world of lies, that world of deception, that world of evil. Oh, you hang on to that light that you have. And brother or sister, 
you've come to the right place or the right person to be able to hold on to and guard that light. Because here we understand you. We are your brothers and sisters. We are the patriots. We are are the chosen ones. We are the awakened ones. We are the ones who know all this information that may eventually end up saving the country and the world. Every single cult you could ever name. Print them all out on a piece of paper, put them on a wall, throw a dart, Whatever one it hits, they will use those techniques. And people don't know it. People can't see it. And people don't care. Yet they sit around and talk about how blind and how sheeple everybody else is. They're all sheep being led to the slaughter. But so are they. Now let's talk about this guy, Donald Trump. And I know this is one that's going to make a whole lot of people mad. But snap out of it. You hear that? That's the sound of snapping out of it. Before you reach over to your phone or your computer and push stop, the, the stop button and walk away from the podcast, do yourself a favor. For once in your life, or maybe the first time in a long time, and listen to some facts. See, the thing about Donald Trump, I mean, you have a lot of People that are very enthusiastic about politics that follow this individual like he's their leader. Make America great again. I mean, political cults, it doesn't matter whether you're Democrat, whether you're Republican. uh, They all have their cult following and all the individuals, you know, in government, have their little individual cult followings, no matter who it is. But see, with Donald Trump, we also have a lot of religious people or people that claim they're religious following Donald Trump. Now, you've heard me talk before about these things, calling him the Trump of God, comparing him to King David. I did. Uh, a show probably it was probably last summer may, maybe the fall where I, I read an article and I talked about it it actually might have been last winter early winter but I read an article where it said that the, the south down in the bible belt here in the United States were replacing Jesus with Trump they were they're so enthusiastic about Donald Trump they they think he's like this almost like this messiah figure now you can go online and you can find people you can find an article if if you put in google indian man worshiping his god donald trump or indian man worshiping statue of Donald Trump, you will actually find an article and a picture of a man from India with a big homemade Donald Trump with his thumb up in his backyard, in a shrine, and he prays to it. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. That is a reality. And you will find other bizarre actions of people that practically worship or worship this man or put him in some kind of biblical perspective. And then you'll hear people say things like, thank God for Donald Trump and Mike Pence. 
Oh, Mike Pence, he's a praying man. Donald Trump's not perfect, but he's got such a good team around him, and God's hand is on this man. Well, I would ask you, if this man, Donald Trump, has the hand of God on him, why is he trying to make such bad decisions where he wanted to start opening the economy back up by Easter? Well... It's almost Easter time at the recording of this podcast. It is April 12th, 2020, and we're going to be hitting the peak of the virus around that time. But then he's talking about, oh, maybe we can open football back up. Oh, maybe we can open the churches back up for Easter Sunday. Oh, we got to get this economy going. Oh, it's just a short period of time. We got to stay home. Then we can all get back out there. Because he doesn't understand this. People that know Donald Trump say he's worried about one thing, and that's the economy. Well, actually, we'll break it down and say Donald Trump is worried about three things, and this is what they say about him. He's worried about the economy, money, and his numbers. He checks them religiously. He's addicted, always looking at his numbers. And if his numbers are down, Donnie's having a bad day. He doesn't care about P. This is why he wants to open the economy back up. Oh, not to get people back to work because they love their companies and their companies love them. No. Because he just wants the economy moving along. Money. He feels that a booming economy is going to be his legacy. That's what he's going to be remembered for, and that's what's going to get him reelected in November 2020. It's a political scheme. And it's also a selfish scheme. Because the best is yet to come. Let me read you something that I found today. You know, I was thinking about making this podcast and then I said, maybe I'll do a different subject. But then uh, my wife brought this to my attention. Here's the breakdown. Here's the greed. And and, and there's many roads. You, You don't have to look far to find out how money oriented Donald Trump is. As a, Vic D. said, five five seconds of research, uh, you'll find out he doesn't care about you. He cares about money, his money, the money of the people that he's associated with. And here's one of them. Trump stopped Dr. Fauci from contradicting him when he pushed hydroxychloroquine. Novartis paid Michael Cohen $1.2 million in 2018 for access to President Trump. In February of 2020, Rudy Giuliani bought $2 million of Novartis stock. You probably already guessed the punchline. Novartis makes hydroxychloroquine. This is, you know, when people say Trump is only for the billionaires, he's one of the elites. He just wants that big pat on the back for the people he's close to. Look how much money you made us. Oh, look how wonderful you are. He doesn't care about anything else. I mean, how how opposite is that behavior 
from the hand of God is on him. That's not godly behavior. And now let's talk about Mike Pence, the praying man. Oh, that Mike Pence, what a good Christian he is. You know what? I Honestly, I have to say it flat out. Mike Pence, the feeling I get from that man, the look of that man, his facial features, looks to me to be just another body snatcher church person. He goes to church. He sits in his pew. He smiles and he nods when the pastor gets excited. Yes, amen. But I think, I think to me, he seems like the kind of man that goes through the motions. He can talk the talk. He can pray. Oh, it's Jesus and all my faith. But how much conviction does he really have? You see, that, that this is something that people used to call uh, a few years back churchianity. And these were religious people or Christian people that went to church, and they didn't really pay attention to or follow the teachings of Jesus. They were more just involved with, with the rituals and the doctrines of their church. And most of those churches were more enthused about their pastor than they were about Christ. Now, I've been to more than a few of those kinds of churches in my day where you went in there and, you know, you sat through the sermon and you got up and everybody you talked to, it was pastor said, pastor said, pastor said, my pastor said, oh, pastor, so wonderful, pastor, 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 pastor. And I'm sure each and every one of you know and have seen the phenomenon yourselves where when church is over and everybody's walking out the door, shaking the hand of the pastor, God bless you, have a good day, a nice sermon, everybody's clamoring for this man's attention. Like he's some kind of movie star. But see, when those people go out into the world, they don't really carry through with the golden rule or the teachings of Christ. What matters to them and what they feel is right, is the right thing for their lives, is to go to church, to nod the head, to say amen, to wave the Bible, yes, amen. We can bow our heads and, oh, in the name of Jesus, oh, Father, you know, all they can go through all the motions, but is the heart is the heart in those motions. And see, I've always been a pretty good judge of character. I can look at someone and I can just get a vibe. Are they honest? Are they dishonest? Are they a good person? Do they like me? Do they not like me? Are they telling me the truth? Do they have, you know, a hidden agenda? Or, you know, I, I just, I just get a feeling about people. That's why I do the kind of work that I do. And I'm sorry if that offends people, but that's the feeling I get from Mike Pence. He's a man of churchianity. And the big thing, before you throw a fit and say, oh man, this guy on this podcast, look what he's saying about Mike Pence and Donald Trump. Just think about this, and maybe this could help break that cultic mentality, because there, there's no science between this, you know, for this malaria drug being a cure for COVID-19, but Donald Trump says it, and it's all over the internet. People are saying, oh, here it is. Hydroxychloroquine, that's the cure for COVID-19. Donald Trump said it. It's not. There's no science for that. And people that think they're going to go just get this drug and start taking it or taking it as a preventive measure, they're, many of them are probably going to die. Because this drug can cause seizures. It can cause heart attack fatal arrhythmia. This stuff can jack you up. 
And if they give it to you in the hospital, you have to have an EKG before they give it to you and they closely monitor you while you're on it because things can go quick really fast. But just because Donald Trump said, oh, yes, yeah, the cure, I'm thinking of taking it. I might take it myself. He makes it sound like a Flintstone vitamin. You can just walk in the store, get it, pop it. Oh, it's fine. But there's that cultic mentality. Oh, Trump said it. It must be so. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's follow the leader. But back to Mike Pence. He sees this kind of thing going down. He sees what Donald Trump is doing. Does he intervene? Does he sit Donald Trump down and say, whatever he calls him, Donald, Mr. Trump, Mr. President, you know, as a man of faith, I've just noticed A, B, and C. And maybe this isn't the direction we should be going in. Maybe this isn't what we're, we should be telling the people. As a man of faith, as a praying man, as someone who supposedly follows the way of God, Shouldn't he be trying to intervene? Shouldn't he be trying to not criticize, but help Donald Trump? And if Donald Trump throws his little temper tantrum and somehow throws Mike Pence out and gets a new vice president, wouldn't it be more honor to say, you know what, somehow I was ousted from that position because I tried to do the right thing. I tried to get this guy and the people around him to do the right thing for the American people because we're all brothers and sisters, we're all God's children. I mean, wouldn't that make sense? Anybody out there listening to this show who is spiritual or religious and you have convictions and you care about other people and you believe that when we leave this world, we will answer for what we've done here. Isn't that your first inclination? I would intervene. I would try to talk to this guy. I would try to help. I would try to do what I could to change this trajectory that we're on before it gets even worse. I mean, these are just a couple of things to think about when we're in this cultic mentality, following these people and why, how the hell is it? That's the question I want to know. How the hell do we even get to a point where we start setting these, setting these people up as leaders in our lives? How does that happen? Because somebody else said, oh, here's the person we should follow. Or five other people said, here's the person we should follow. Monkey see, monkey do. We don't want to go in against the grain. Peer pressure. What is it? How do we find ourselves in these positions where we're following these people? Because, again, a little honest research is just going to blow the lid off of the whole operation. I don't care if it's Richie from Boston, which is a guy on YouTube. I don't care if it's Donald Trump. I don't care if it's Mike Pence. I don't care if it's any other politician or any other uh, one of these people on the Internet. I mean, there's one guy on YouTube that people, you know, follow him like a Pied Piper. And he's a convicted, uh, you know, what do they call it? 
when you when you've when you've had sex and I think it was on un, unwilling sex with a minor. I think he actually raped her. What you know, he did time for it. He was in prison. He got out of prison. He had a YouTube channel. He did this. He went to prison. He got out of prison. He started another YouTube channel. And and people just... How does somebody like that become your leader? That's the thing that I don't understand. If we really... Are we that lost? That we need somebody like that or somebody like a Donald Trump or somebody like a whomever to tell us what to think and what to do? Are we that clueless? We, we can't figure it out? And yet everybody else is stupid. Everybody else is a sheeple. But everybody else is in the same damn trap. And how in the world did they get there? And that's the question each and every one of us should be asking ourselves right now. I don't care how figured out you think you have everything. I don't care how wise you think your guru or your favorite politician or your favorite conspiracy theorists, how wise you think they are. I need you to ask yourself right now, Am I in a cult? Am I having a cultic mentality following this person or this group? Am I a sheep being led to the slaughter? And I'm actually lying to myself for whatever reason, thinking I need to hold on to this person and I'm too afraid to do any research to see if there's anything out there that debunks this person, because I'll tell you, there, there is. No matter who it is, there is. I know people following these pseudo-religious personalities on social media, on YouTube, who say they're doing it because they love the people that they're talking to. It's not about money. They don't even have ads on their YouTube channel. But then at the end of every video, they say this YouTube channel can't survive without your support. Check the PayPal link below so you can donate to me. I wasn't aware that hooking up a microphone to a computer or a tablet or a cell phone, which incidentally what I have right now is just a little mic hooked up to my cell phone. I have a free app that I put some images to and I make a video and then I put the I put the uh, the podcast on YouTube. I wasn't aware that costed my, it doesn't cost me a penny. It doesn't cost me a dime. So how is that not going to survive without your financial help? And people give this half wit money. Again, How the hell does that happen? We need to ask ourselves that question. Am I in a cult? Do I have a cultic mentality? Am I following somebody that's using cultic language and cultic techniques on me to make me feel like I'm lost, I'm going to hell, or I'm going to die, or I'm going to make a wrong decision without their supreme guidance? And we need to ask ourselves again, am I a sheep being led to the slaughter? Because if we're following a personality or a Pied Piper, chances are that we are a sheep being led to the slaughter. I'm Paul James Caden. I thank you for listening. Stay safe. Stay well. Educate yourselves, use critical thinking, think for yourselves, be independent thinkers. You don't need a leader. It's okay to take advice from people if it's good advice. It's good to follow your own intuition.
and inner guidance because that's how God leads us. But don't set anyone up as your leader. And before you say, oh, nobody's my leader, I listen to those people because they tell the truth. Well, again, you need to go back and ask yourself those very important questions that I just said we should all ask ourselves if we're following anybody, even remotely on the Internet. So stay safe, stay well, be an independent thinker, and I'll see you next time here on the spirit side.